Hey, everybody, we got something really special for you today. We have a brand new episode calling it Couch to Casco. Everything you need to know from go to the quote unquote couch to doing the Casco Bay short course swim run. Let's check it out. Welcome to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris. And this is episode 124 of the show. As Chipper mentioned, we got something new for everyone this week. Odyssey Swim Run Casco Bay is roughly eight weeks away from the time this podcast is released. And we thought it'd be cool to do a show where we give everyone that's on the fence about trying Swim Run or anyone who needs some help trying to get their friends to try Swim Run a roadmap for prepping for this year's Casco Bay short course. So welcome to Couch to Casco. So we're on the couch. Yeah. Now let's get ready to go to Casco. Yeah. Portland, yes. Maine. Totally. So... We couldn't think of a better person to join us on this episode than the Purple Patch Coach, Odyssey Swim Run Race Director, Casco Bay Course Designer, and Elite Swim Runner himself, John Stevens, who's won this course several times before. John's been on the show multiple times, and we bug him any anytime we need to. Uh, we need some solid wisdom, especially in the Casco Bay area. <laughs> he knows all, and he lives on one of the islands yeah. as well. Lives on Little Diamond. Little Diamond. Where the race is starting off this year. Yeah, exactly. Super cool. Super cool. So we're breaking up this discussion with John into basically three sections that will help sort of any and all swim run curious athletes to get a good understanding of what the Casco Bay course is going to be like. We'll discuss the course. We'll talk about how to train for this race and what gear you'll want to have. So I think... uh, you know, a little bit of a quick hit on the Casco Bay short course is 10.5 miles is the course distance. On the show notes, we have a leg-by-leg breakdown for you. We also have a link to the course map that's on the Odyssey site. And I think, uh, yeah, with that. Yeah, there's six total runs and there's five swims. But without any further ado, let's kick it over to our conversation with Coach John Stevens. None other, and I honestly can't think of a better person for this discussion. Literally, have the best person person to have this discussion. Purple Patch Coach, Swim Run Race Director, and Casco Bay Course Designer, Elite Swim Runner John Stevens. Thank you for coming back on the show. Well, thank you guys. Happy to be here and uh, chat with you again. Yeah, we always love tapping your your wealth of knowledge for anything Maine related, and then more specifically Casco Bay Swim Run. Literally, (laughs) (laughs) seem to have a pretty good grip on stuff. Yeah, there's there's not there's not much I know a whole lot about, but Casco Bay and Swim Run. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. Key to the city. Yeah, (laughs) and and it's in your mailbox. Um, Yeah, so so we're talking about Couch to Casco. How can someone get ready for this race? expose people to swim run, get them hooked on it. We think the second you do a race, we got you. So let's tell people how to get to this race. So we have, so John, you designed the short course, which is what we're going to be talking about here. Do you want to give us kind of like an overview of what this course looks like and sort of look and feel for folks who might be racing it for the first time? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I think if there's any swim run race that's going to kind of lock people in and say, hey, Let's come do swim run. I think Casco Bay is is that race in the sense that it, it really ties into the origins of swim run of this, you know, Utilu, which you know, and I totally just completely massacred that. But welcome to the club. island to island, and that's the idea of there's a start line, there's a finish line. It's not a loop course. There's a, it's a point to point across islands, across oceans. And you're kind of getting there. And, you know, obviously we, we build it up to the bigger long course, but the short course is the same, same idea. And you're getting that same concept. You're still traveling through these different islands. And, you know, when you get to Casco Bay, it's really unique in that each island is its kind of its own little unique uh, environment. And, and mm-hmm. they all have their own vibe and their own feel uh, and their own politics and everything's a little different. And even with the short course, you're touching on, a number of these different islands. And I think to get the kind of the swim run bug, uh, this is a good place to start. And, and, and this year, the short course is a different course because as we like to do with, with swim run, or especially with Casco Bay, it's always a little bit different. And so this is a brand new short course course for, for Odyssey Casco Bay. And if, if we're going to dive right into it, you know, we're, we're starting on 
Little Diamond Island, which is where I live. I grew up, I've lived there for 40 plus years and spent all my summers there. So I'm pretty psyched that we actually get to have the start on this island and, uh, and, you know, right off the bat, you know, have everybody running right by my house right off the get-go. But so, you know, for really breaking it down, you know, Casco Bay is unique in the sense that we do have, there are some technical trails and there are uh, some tricky run sections, uh, but also it, it, it's not, it's beginner friendly. And even with Casco or with Little Diamond Island, you'll see that. And that's the sense where, you know, it's mostly dirt road is kind of what we find on these courses. And so across Little Diamond Island, you're going to start on the dock. You're going to kind of hold people on the dock, let you go. You've got a quick uphill climb on a kind of a paved path. And then you've got a dirt road kind of descending down. And that first run is about, it's about a half a mile. And then you're going to run into to the sandbar. And given the tide, my guess is, you know, anyone that's done, done, Casco Bay in the past knows that that little Diamond Island, the Great Diamond Island sandbar is tricky and it's very tide dependent. Um, and I think given the timing of when we're starting, it, it's probably going to end up being a run for uh, for the short course people. So it's going to be a run across the sandbar, but you go from kind of packed dirt road to very loose gravelly sand, uh, some puddles. You're going to get your feet wet for the first time. And as we know as from runners, it's we always find it funny that we're kind of jumping over puddles on that first run. <laughs> yeah. Don't want, to get our, don't want to get our shoes wet, but there's an opportunity to get your shoes wet right off the bat. Um, and that's going to take us on to great diamond. And, and so, you know, you're about three quarters of a mile into that first run and you're going to run. That's where you meet up and we, we, we kind of connect with the long course people who will be coming from the op- opposite direction. So we'll kind of have this convergence of short course and long course together. And it might get a little bit more crowded and I think that's okay. Uh, at this point in the race, because the long course will be pretty spread out. Uh, but that run's going to continue right down off the uh, the public dock of Great Diamond. And so once again, we've got a low tide j- dock jump for the athletes, should they want to take it. So as always, we've kind of got the different options. You can do the maybe 20 foot jump off the end of the pier, right into the water. You can take the Hell ramp yeah. down nice. to the float and do the little two foot plop in um, up to you. But as as you know, if anyone wants to really show off, you can do that flying leap right off of that uh, uh, dock in of Great Diamond, and this is the first time first time uh, swim entry for us uh, for any of the courses, long course or short course, off of Great Diamond into that swim, and it's going to be a swim over to Peaks Island, right, kind of across the channel there. Not a lot of current, especially it'll be about low tide, it'll be pretty stagnant, um, and it's a swim straight across. So we're going to end up swimming from Great Diamond over to to Peaks Island, and you know. With that one, again, not a lot of current, shouldn't be a super difficult swim, but it's that first swim of the day. And if you're doing the short course, it is a little bit longer. Um, as all the swims are with Casco Bay, we don't have too many short, short swims. So you have that that swim over to Peaks, um, and that takes you into, if you've done the race before, a familiar you know Peaks Island run. If you haven't, it's going to be a little mix here. Now, now we're on Peaks, we've got a little bit of some paved roads. Uh, for a little bit onto the back side of the island, and then it veers off into the trails. Uh, and those trails can be tricky. That is where we talk about uh, swim run being heads up. And that's heads up racing through those trails and through those woods. Uh, there's a. It's very easy to miss a turn. I've having done the race myself four times. I think I've missed turns in there twice. Like <laughs> it's pretty easy to do and get turned around. Um, but anyway, you're going to find your way through these trails and, 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 and in and out of things. And eventually through, you'll hopefully find the opening into battery steel and then kind of back through those trails onto the road. And, you know, maybe it won't be like last year where I think you guys ended up in some deep, deep murk or muck of uh, some water. There was some swampiness. Yeah, it was yeah. Like a bomb. There was some swampiness. Yeah. And so there's that possibility of that being back there. And so this kind of lends itself to say, like, here's the diversity of what we have with this Casco Bay race. You've got dirt roads and now we're talking paved roads and then we're talking single track trail where you can get lost into this murkiness and this muckiness. So, you know, if we're talking about someone's like thinking, okay, how do I prepare for this race from a run standpoint, you kind of have to be ready for it all. Um, I don't think you're going to run into that situation where you're on at this point in the race anyway, super slippery rocks and seaweed, but you need to be able to uh, have some single track and some trail experience. So I think this is where it lends itself well to being able to uh, have some trail experience, single track, dealing with routes, navigating, 
heads up racing, meaning you're watching the ground so you don't take a misstep, but also you're looking for the flags and the cues to see where you're going. Um, but you'll come out of battery steel, come out of the muck, paved road. And this is a good opportunity to you know add a little speed because paved, it's open, you can go, it's exposed, it might be a little bit hot. Uh, but you make that run uh, around to the other end of the island, and then it's that kind of longer swim over to, to Cushing. And at this point now, this is where we start running into currents and, um, and tides. So at this point, it's going to be an incoming tide, which means if you're swimming from peaks to Cushing, it's going to be pushing you from left to right. And that can be a really tricky swim. It's, it doesn't seem that long. All these swims at the end of the race don't seem that long on paper. But once you get in there and the current starts moving – they end up being longer than you would expect them to be. Uh, And so this one, the current's really going to be pushing you from left to right. So you actually have to aim pretty far left. There's actually a pier there in Cushing's or Cushing Island that you want to aim for. And then aiming for that pier is actually going to bring you over into that cove in this beach. And at this point now we're kind of following a similar route route that we have for the past few years, but that puts you Mm -hmm. on Cushing. And again, kind of a, a, a packed down dirt road run on Cushing, a little bit of single track, not that much. Um, and then another longer swim over to, to house Island. And again, that's one of those really tricky swims where on paper and on the map, it doesn't look super far, but it's a pretty solid, I think eight, 900 yard swim. And again, the, 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 the currents in there can be pretty tricky uh, given what they're doing outgoing. It's probably going to be pushing you out to the left and so you're going to have to aim pretty far right, but that will eventually get you onto House Island. And, and between Cushing and House, this is where you're going to have to deal with kind of climbing over some rocks and some seaweed and really having an understanding of being able to have your feet underneath you and dealing with these slippery conditions. And honestly, some points are almost on all fours. You've got your hands down, you've got your feet, step, feet down, and you're trying to navigate seaweed and rocks and barnacles and all these things. Um, but anyway, onto House Island. And then you've got the run through the fort, which is always really cool to run through that super area. Cool. And they built up, super cool. Yeah. I mean, they built up these yurts and cabins, and it's a really cool place. If anyone's nice. looking for a place to stay, that's a really cool place to stay if you can get to find some space there uh, in that. But but through House Island, around the backside of that, and we've kind of got this uh, finish line that we had in the first few years of the race, which is a direct shot from, from House Island over to Peaks. Um, again, it's one of those where it, the current at that point shouldn't be too, too bad. And you're ready to be done. You kind of come over. You end up on Peaks Island. And we've got a, a little wooden staircase you've got to run up to get to the finish line. And that's kind of like the nail in the coffin for some people at the end of the day. <laughs> is you, you've got on the beach and you've got to go up these stairs. And not even you call them the stairs. Steps, I guess. I don't even know. Um, but it's this climb up to the finish line. So there's nothing worse than finishing a race and getting to that climb. But, you know, there's the, the, the quick and dirty on the on the short course, I think. But. You know, I think if we're going to take anything away from this, it's I think what the point of this is, is what do I need to train for? and What do I need to be ready for? Is that right? That's exactly. Right. That's you're like a third guest here. I love it. John. <laughs> Segways all over the place. <clears throat> yeah. So obviously you're you're a, a coach with Purple Patch Fitness. We've had you on many times. You know what you're doing and, and all sorts of things. Swim run. So the couch to Casco Bay, we are operating under some level of a, assumption that you feel you have some physical fitness to get you from start to finish of this race. So we have that kind of concept. And then we have somebody who's maybe a triathlete or uh, an endurance athlete, maybe a trail runner or something. And you're looking for something a little bit different. So you have a little bit of quote unquote endurance um, legs on you. Um, So for the people who are more on the the couch side, what sort of training uh, would you would you kind of recommend them focusing on in these next uh, 10 weeks or so? Yeah. I mean, I think we're at a good, uh, we're at a good point right now, a good launching off point to get into the race. So you still have that opportunity. You still have the time to prepare. And, you know, one of the things that we, we run into is people look at the overall distances of these and they say, Oh man, two miles of swimming. I can't swim two miles. And the, the reality of it is you don't need to swim two miles. You mm-hmm. need to swim whatever the longest swim is. And, and that's it. And you don't need to run six, seven miles. You just need to be able to run whatever the longest run is on that. Because as, as we all know, when you have the swim and the run breaking it up, 
you get that break. And so it's nice, you know, you kind of get to that point where you're like, man, my arms are dead. I can't swim anymore. Like, well, perfect. I'm done with the swim. Now I can go run and, and your arms in essence get a, a break. And, and so I think what it is, is it's looking at those distances and saying, okay, let's say the longest swim is a, probably, I guess if we're looking at short course about, we'll say about a thousand yards just to keep it easy. Um, if you can swim a thousand yards straight, you're fine. And I think you're good on that sense. And so there's that idea of how long do I have to be able to swim straight? A thousand yards. How long do I have to be able to run? Maybe three miles. And I think, but then it's that idea of, sure, I can run three miles. Sure, I can swim a thousand yards. But then we, we, we put it all together. And it's how long am I able to be active and keep moving and, and mm-hmm. stay uh, mobile? And so then, you know, you're, you're starting to break it down. You can figure out, okay, well, this is going to take me two hours. Um, and that's not saying you have to go out and be able to run two hours or swim two hours or do whatever, but find a combination of something where you can be prepared to be moving for that amount of time. And obviously, you know, being physically fit in that, that realm to be able to say, I can swim a thousand yards. Great. Then I can go do something else. Then I can come back and I can swim 800 yards and then I can go do something else and I can go back and swim 800 yards again. That's kind of what we're looking at. And then, you know, I, I think the, big realm of it is don't let the overall distances overwhelm you. Just understand that I have to be able to do this amount and then go run a little bit and then swim this amount and then go run this amount. And, and I mean, honestly, with that. yeah, like, like that can't be overstated. I think when people see, so the total distance for the short course is about 10 and a half miles, like something, just take our word for it in swim run. <laughs> like if it's an 18 mile total <laughs> run, like you don't feel like you ran 18, 18 miles. miles. Like the sure. fact, like the breaks really do make a difference. Like just getting off of your feet, being in the water, like, yeah, your, your, your ability. If you think like that, Oh, I, I could never run past like three, three miles or something. It's like, okay, fine. Can you do that a couple times with a 10, 15 minute break in between? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And I think that, again, like you said, it can't be understated enough. Like it's that idea of you don't have to do it all at once. Like anyone that's ever run a marathon would say, oh my gosh, like I can't, that's so intense in my body, so hard. But then you go do a swim run that involves, let's say, 22 miles of running and it's not the same feeling. You don't have the same takeaway and it doesn't affect your body in the same way. Um, I think the big thing is just being able to make sure that your body is able to move for that amount of time. And then the other thing that comes into that, and I think this is kind of the unforgotten thing a lot of the time too, is well, yes, I can swim a thousand yards. Yes, I can run four miles. Okay, great. I can string a few of those together. But then it's that idea of like, okay, no, I am out there for two or three hours. I, you need to start thinking about nutrition and you need to actually train your body to be able to eat and drink while you're doing these things as well. And I think that mm-hmm. can't be understated enough either. And that idea of, you know, you need to be able to eat and you need to be able to drink while you're going through this because you have to be able to last those two or three hours and I think one of the things we're finding these days with the science of it all too is this, there's this idea where, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I can't eat anything and then go run. Um, well, maybe you can't right now, but just like you can't go run a certain long distance or swim a certain long distance, you train for it. And we can train our guts for nutrition in that sense too. So you train your gut to be able to take it. And so now we're talking about, okay, I don't have to swim two miles straight. I have to swim a thousand yards a few times and I don't have to run eight miles straight, I have to run two or three miles a few times. I don't have to eat all of this in the time, but it's like just making sure you're eating enough while you're doing that to, to, to power your body and to get through that and training that aspect of it to it as well. And so I think there's that kind of like third, um, almost dynamic that we kind of forget about in there sometimes as well. Yeah. Love that. That's, that's such great tips. So, you know, go to your, your local kind of sporting goods, or if you have gels or, blocks or whatever way you get nutrition or fuel in and start trying to work those into some of your your longer workouts yeah yeah Um, and so so if we're breaking it down for the newbie i mean again we'll kind of recap here a little bit there's this idea of you don't have to swim that total distance you just have to be able to swim maybe what the longest swim is and if so uh, as we know as as athletes we don't go in and just swim two thousand yards straight we do it as you know, we do five, two hundreds, we do 10, one hundreds, we break it up a little bit and mm-hmm. there's that sense of it too. So you can go into a swim workout and just understand that you're going to be breaking it up into these different, uh, intervals and that's going to add up over time. And same with the run, you know, mixing some easy running, you know, if you're just looking to get off the couch and do this, I think there's that idea of, you don't need to worry about tempo running or speed running or paces or anything like that. It's the idea of you just need to be able to be on your feet and be moving. 
um, and able to handle that amount of time while you're going. And again, it doesn't have to be the total distance of the race, but think about what those distances are going to be within it. And then, you know, I think if you can, there's that ideal situation where you can mix in some sort of swim run specific type of training where you can find some open water and you've got the gear and you can test it out and you can try it and you can practice nutrition and you can practice transitions. That's ideal scenario, right? You can go run in your wetsuit and swim in your shoes and get used to it in that sense. But is it ultimately totally necessary? No. Is it going to be very helpful for you? Yes. <laughs> you know, there's that too. Um, so, you know, for the newbie, I think it's that idea of just getting comfortable in the gear as well. Yeah. And you can also work in uh, like a, a brick situation. So maybe a 20 or 30 minute run before, swim for 20 or 30 minutes, and then maybe a 10 or 15 minute run after. And then there you're kind of working in a few of the different sports. You're also getting that sort of distance and time on your feet, but in a few different ways and see how, see how your legs feel on that second run after the swim. And you got a little bit of a break and you'll kind of understand what we're putting down. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think anyone that, that follows you guys on Strava will see you guys doing these runs ahead of these swims. And it's that idea of just time on your feet, getting into the mm-hmm. swim and just getting used to that transition and, and, and what that's going to feel like. And I think that that can't be understated enough either. And it's that idea of just like, how, how is a run going to feel after a swim? How is a swim going to feel after a run? And, and trying to fit some of those in. And it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be, you know, crazy. You don't have to strip right down and jump in the pool, but go for a run get to the pool, change up, get in and go for a swim or go for a swim. And when you're done, hop out, dry off, get changed, go for a run and just kind of get used to those, like that kind of, or create that familiarity of combining those two things together. Totally, totally. Now, um, are, would you, are there any re- uh, sort of workouts that you'd recommend, I guess, for, for like the couch to Casco people, but also for, let's say you're a triathlete, in the in the heat of training for maybe like a fall Ironman or something, um, you know what if if someone wanted to do Casco, what what types of workouts do you think would be helpful just to give people a sense of of or how to get better prepared for it? I mean, I, I think if you're talking couch to Casco, if you're looking for something specific to do that can be really specific to swim run, it's that what we were just talking about. It, it's those brick workouts where you're able to do a swim and a run or, or, or somehow sandwich that. And maybe that's a, a swim and then a run, then a swim that's a little bit harder or a run, then a swim, then a run. If you're in a pool, if you're able to get in the open water and practice again, just what's that going to feel like to swim in your shoes and get out of the water with wet shoes, move your pool buoy to where you need it start moving with wet, soggy feet running, that takes a little bit to get used to. And that can kind of be a little bit of jarring. Same for triathletes too. I mean, that's something that we just don't do as triathletes is you don't run in wet shoes. You don't, you don't run in a wetsuit. You don't swim in shoes. So that part of it is very different. And so I think anytime you can practice that very specific swim run gear training, I think that is going to be the biggest takeaway. Now, one of the things I would say to triathletes coming into it is this very big idea of like swim run just fits into your training. It just does. Like, I mean, you're training for these events, you're swimming and you're running, it's there, you've got it. You know, the only thing you might not have is the gear and that's easy to find a workaround. You can jump in and do this at any point in your training. It's not going to hurt it. It's not going to harm it. It's probably going to help your training in a lot of ways uh, that you wouldn't expect the same way that you would be willing to go race a sprint or an Olympic triathlon, hop into a swim run at the same time. You know, it, it, it's, it's going to get you that race feel. It's going to get your adrenaline pumping. It's that idea of transitioning in and out between the two things. And I think for swim running, that's the hardest thing is the transitions. It's, it's going from that, that, that horizontal, uh, swimming to the vertical running back to the horizontal swimming and that blood flow change and everything kind of it throws you off a little bit perfect training for triathlon. So I think it fits really well into any triathlete trying to do any training to kind of come into a race. And then at the same time, it mixes it up and makes it fun. You know, a lot of the triathletes I train, it's like, well, I don't want to do this. I only want to do my A race. I don't want to do this B or C race because my time isn't going to be great. Well, guess what? Swim run, you don't have a time. You're just going to go do it. It's just going to be fun. You don't have to worry about Mm -hmm. that. The ego side of it can kind of take a back seat. You're just doing it for fun. So you know, you can even get on Strava and be like, oh, I just did this for fun. So if your time isn't great, no one cares. Badass uh, points, and Most too. people aren't going to know yeah. what the hell you're talking. They're just yeah, going to be impressed. Yeah, no one knows the difference anyway. You'd be like, oh, I was really wasn't feeling it today. No one would know the difference. Like, it's, Yeah, it's going to be like, doing you did it. what now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And so it's an opportunity to train hard and work your body and have fun at the same time, which I, you know, at the end of the day, that's what I remind my, my triathletes and athletes that I coach all the time is we're, we're, this is fun. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. That's why we're doing this. And yeah. this is an opportunity to have fun. I mean, totally. It's like, Hey, I mean, we've said this on the show before. It's like whatever activity you're doing, swim, run, triathlon, whatever, like these things should be enhancing your life if you're yeah, not a professional. Yes. So if it's, it's not paying it's your bills, feeling like a job, <laughs> if you're not enjoying yourself, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, Go find exactly. something to have fun. Um, yeah. Well, I think, you know, that's not the greatest transition to the last thing we want to talk about. But <laughs> despite that, let's just go for it. So, you know, there is some minimum gear that swim runners should be should be using <laughs> For when, when when they do swim runs, mm-hmm. partly because it helps with the experience. If you're running in a wetsuit, you know one of the questions we get all the time is uh, shoes and socks. So why don't we start at the bottom and kind of work the work our way up? Um, the question we get the most is, don't you get blisters running in wet socks? And we'll um we'll we'll put a lens of this over the couch to casco as minimal sort yeah. of investment. You know, you're not going to go. We're not saying you need to drop a thousand dollars on a brand new kit use what you have kind of thing. So we'll, we'll operate under that. Totally. Totally. Well. Yeah. So for socks, something synthetic, nylon, thin, you don't want a lot of cotton. Those are the things that kind of give you blisters. So keep it thin and tight. Um, shoes, see what you have at home. Your if you have trail, trail shoes. shoes if home. you have trail yeah. shoes, like they could work, you could do a bucket test, see if they retain water. Um, you know, you don't need to go out and spend two hundred and twenty dollars for you know Vivo barefoots and some you know these these really amazing sort of very specific swim run shoes. You could just use what you have. Absolutely. I mean, I I look back to the first swim run I ever did, and probably you guys too, and all of us. Like right when it came to the U.S., it's like, oh crap, here's this new sport. I better get all the stuff I need for it. And I started looking. Yeah on the sweetest websites, right? And falling, okay, what does everyone else have over there? Like, well, I'm not ready to invest in a wetsuit yet. I'm not ready to do mm-hmm. that. And I, I mean, so if I look back to my first ever swim run kit, I took my Convara 3s, I think, that I was running in, and I drilled holes in the, bo- holes in the bottom because that's what I was told. In hindsight, yeah. stupid, didn't make a difference. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I had my regular road running shoes. That's all it was. Road running shoes. I used trail running socks, so maybe, you know, quarter high, um, I went on Craigslist and I bought a used old or not Craigslist, I guess it was Facebook or somewhere, but, uh, I think it was a, a TYR hurricane five wetsuit. I chopped mm-hmm. off the arms and the legs and that was it. That was my kit. Here we go. And I had a, a oh, an old pull buoy that I had in the attic that I somehow made, I found some video in Swedish that I somehow translated <laughs> and made a pull buoy that strapped to my leg. And that, I mean, oh, and that worked. Days. And that's ultimately, I mean, really, that's all you need. And even at the time, my partner, Matt Hurley, he was like, oh, I don't have a pull buoy. So we didn't even make one. He just wore whatever <laughs> Nike shoes he was wearing. And he had uh, an old Orca wetsuit, full triathlon wetsuit. And he's like, oh, I really don't want to cut it because I don't know if I'm going to be committed to this. So he just did the whole thing in a full wetsuit. I mean, and you guys it, won't. We did. <laughs> so yeah. At the end yeah. of the day, you <laughs> that's know, how legends how are born. Make it work. So, I mean, if now we're talking, what do you. <laughs> Bare minimum, you really don't need much. You've probably got it in your closet if you're a triathlete. Uh, but if you want to make the most out of your time or, or most out of your day, and you know, let's let's think about it. it. So ultimately, yes, whatever running shoe you have will work. A trail running shoe will be a little bit better. Casco base, a little bit more neutral in that sense because again, we do have very like flat uh, dirt roads, some paved mm-hmm. roads, some single tracks, some technical s- bits where you're climbing over rocks and seaweed. But could you get away with your road running shoe? Granted, it isn't absorbing a crap ton of water. Absolutely. You're fine. You know, make sure you have the right thin synthetic socks like you were talking about. So you don't get the blisters. Yes. Um, as we've all known who's on the shoes. Yeah. Pull buoy is going to be really helpful in a lot of different ways. Um, the, you know, yeah. max pull buoys, like the, you know, the art keel, that's going to be ideal. If that's kind of out of your price range, if you've got one in your, your closet, that you've had sitting around forever, it'll do the job. It'll work. It'll get it done. I think I even, the, the first few years I raced, I would always race with a kid's pull buoy. It was like a junior, uh, <laughs> <laughs> little mini guy, completely We've the also, opposite uh... of where we are. Yeah. We've also seen if you're an into your DIY stuff, if you just have the regular pull boys, people glue stack two on and just gorilla glue them together. You yeah. get all the most of the benefits of the Euro. It's not going to be as sexy as the big Euro buoys, but it'll get the job done. Max Absolutely. flotation. 
Yeah, Max Flotation, glue a couple of them together. I mean, we've seen people with soda bottles, right? <laughs> like, and taking yeah. empty soda bottles. Pontoon, pontoon soda bottles. style. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, for sure, for exactly. sure. I mean, you can make it work, it, and and that's the goal. And then, you know, if we're, we're working our way up, we talk about wetsuit. And uh, you could do it in a full wetsuit. Casco Bay is a little bit earlier in September, so it'll be a little cooler. Not much, maybe, but a little bit than years past. Could you do it in a full wetsuit? Sure, maybe for the short course, you probably mm. you might be able to get away with it. It's not going to be super comfortable. It's not going to be your your easiest route, but it's possible. Other than that, you could take an old triathlon wetsuit and just cut it off, like I did, cut it off above the knees, cut it off above the elbows. You're good to yep. go. Or you kind of find your entry level or used um, swim run wetsuit, and and that's there. And you know we're kind of working our way up on what's available to you. But again, yeah. even for short course, I feel like you, you can get away with, uh, less on the short course and, and especially yeah. on Casco Bay. And, and, and so, you know, again, don't be discouraged if you don't want to buy a new wetsuit, just cut one up and chop it up and, or, or an old one you have buy a used one or go, you know, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't recommend going with the full, but again, you could. Um, and then from there, you know, we, we end up with hand paddles and, and most swimmers have a paddle of some sort that they've used in the past or they have around or they have available. I mean, I, and I think we can all say paddles are, are definitely going to be helpful. Um, and again, we're, we're at this point we're, we're with the pull buoy and the paddles are compensating for the drag of the shoes and things like that. Um, but I think you can find something that's going to work for you. I wouldn't go, oh, I would go smaller over bigger for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and make sure that you practice and try it at least uh, a few times before you go use it on race day. Uh, if you just grab a paddle and go use it on race day, you know, you're going to find your shoulders get shot really, really quickly. Um, so I think that falls into the training uh, realm of things a little bit. Just make sure you practice with the paddles right. a little bit so gonna, you know what to expect. <laughs> I'm going to tie that in. Those those swims that, that you're doing that John just advised on, grab your buoy and your paddles and work those in. So, you know, if John, like you said, uh, 10, 100, for example, if you're doing 1,000, maybe do the evens just swimming and the odds have your, your hand paddles and your buoy on. And that'll get the frequency and you'll you'll sort of start getting used to that stuff. But... Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, the more you use it, the easier it's going to seem on race day. And so I think practice, practice, practice. And, you know, I, w I wouldn't stress about it. I mean, I think the idea is you want to get some in and don't think that if you've, if you've gotten to race day, and you've not done it at all, you're going to be uh, completely up a creek without a paddle. Uh, but I think there's that idea of, you know, make sure you try to practice it and get that in a little bit. And that's kind of one of the keys with it. For sure, for sure. Now, um, I think the rest of the kit is pretty straightforward. Goggles. Goggles <laughs> and swim cap that's provided. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You know, earplugs if you need that sort of thing. So so we actually have a ton of resources either on our website, lowtideboys.com. We have like a gear, swim we run gear overview. We have a bunch of episodes that are sort of specific on this stuff. Like we have a, a shoe episode on our gear talk. Mm -hmm. We have a wetsuit episode. We have like partner stuff. We have, you know, race tactics stuff but um we also have a swap meet where you can on facebook where you can go in and see if um anyone's selling or you can just say that you're looking for a swimmer wetsuit and you might be able to uh even just borrow one um if you want to try it out without committing to buy and um so so yeah all that stuff's out there on our youtube channel we have videos on how to make your diy pool buoy if you're going to yep. go that route so um so yeah so just a lot of a lot of information out there to really make it as sort of like we just want people to try the sport like mm -hmm. that's our that's our mantra for the show is to you know get people super stoked on the sport and and yeah so so john i don't know if you have any sort of final thoughts any any rah-rah speech to get people to sign up <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think at the end of the day is don't be intimidated by this. I, I think, again, people look at the overall distances, like overall swimming and overall running, and it, it's intimidating. And again, you don't have to cover all of that at once. It's, it is broken up. And again, like we said, it's that idea of the swims and the runs enable you by, by splitting it up between those two. It enables you to go further than you think you're capable of. And so I don't be scared by that aspect of it. And, um, you know, just understand that you kind of have to look at each leg individually. And that's kind of what you have to cover. I mean, granted, you have to be able to keep your body moving for a certain amount of time. And you can find ways to do that through swimming and running or cross training, even add in some cycling just to kind of keep your body moving a little bit uh, mm -hmm. over over a period of time just to know, make sure you can handle that. But don't be intimidated by the 
the overall distances. And I think the other side with that too, though, is also, you know, practice and, and, and get in there and do it and, and make sure, you know, this is swim run. So make sure you are practicing some swimming and some running. I mean, if you want to guarantee success and say, you're going to have the best day that you can have out there, you really do have to practice in your gear and practice swimming and practice running. You could go do it without doing any of that. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's, you want to have the most enjoyable time you can have doing it. Cause again, it's supposed to be fun. You don't want to be miserable out there. So take those opportunities to practice it and to get that in so that you actually do enjoy uh, what you're going through. Um, you know, obviously we have the solo options and we have the team options and there's those different things. And solo is just the easiest. And, you know, I don't think we touched on this part of it too much, but there, you know, there is that extra bit of enjoyment of finding someone to share this with and do it with and finding a partner and, and solo is easy and you can go do it. And I, we added it because people like it and they want to do it and I get it. Um, but you know, at the same time too, don't hesitate to find someone that you might think is faster than you, or you might think is slower than you and team up just because it does add that extra level of enjoyment, which again, which is what we're all about is, is having fun. And so I think going out there and finding someone to join totally. yeah. with is a big, big thing. And, and John, you have seen a lot of swim runners in your time. I think it's fair if people can kind of get out of the, the thinking of that, oh, well, Chris has to run an eight minute mile and I have to run exactly an eight and he has to swim at this pace and I have to do this. We've seen plenty of people that are actually have considerable disparities between their abilities and they're a very successful team. And again, as long as your goals are the same, is to have fun. Yep. Who cares if yeah. someone's uh, five seconds is slower on a hundred? Oh, a- a- absolutely. Situation. You know, and that's you know, that's why we have the tether. You kind of pull each other along a little bit. You know, Lars and I race yeah. frequent frequently together, and I'm a much faster swimmer than he is, and he's a much faster runner than I am, and it's just kind of funny for us to see the tether be really stretched out in different ways, <laughs> on different legs, and so you know, there's there's runs where he's just charging ahead, and that tether is just like super tight as he's charging ahead on the run yeah. and he's just pulling me. I'm familiar. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Right. And then I'm dead. And then we get to the Love swim. It. I'm like, all right, here we go. Get ready to get dragged. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it, it flip, flip flops. So there's that idea with it too, that, yeah, no, I mean, you, you work to each other's strengths and there's something to be said about, um, leveling yourself up or, um, you know, kind of limiting yourself a little bit too, and just finding that team aspect of it just adds a whole nother element, which is what makes swim run so unique and special. Yeah. And if you're wondering where to look for a partner, check your triathlon group that you're doing it with. Obviously, head to Facebook. There's the Odyssey uh, Swim Run Facebook page. People post on there. We also have the Low Tide Boys Strava group. So if you go to Low Tide Boy, or sorry, if you go to Strava, search Low Tide Boys. You can post in there if you're looking for a partner as well. And uh, people are more than happy to play matchmaker. It's yeah. a fun little thing to do for us <laughs> swim runners. That's is true. Try to match That's people true. up. So give us your, your toughest challenge. We're <laughs> <for it>. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. Well, John, thank you so much for taking the time, man. Really appreciate you always being there for us and, and uh, sharing your, your wisdom with, uh, with us and, and our listeners. So thank you so much, man. We'll see you in a yeah, couple of weeks. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. And of course, you know, I think with this too, you know, maybe there's a way we can set it up too. I, people may have some follow up questions. And I'm happy to help answer questions that if anyone has, you know, listening to this or they need some clarification or some help on it too. Like, uh, you know, don't, don't hesitate to find a way to reach out and, and ask either at Odyssey or maybe three. I don't want to put too much burden on you guys. Oh, yeah. Send it to guys, us. Yeah. DM yeah, we'll like us. Yeah. yeah. Or send it to DM Odyssey us, and be yeah. like, hey, I heard this guy, John, say something or other. And, and I'm happy to help kind of uh clarify anything i talked about narrow it down just you know we want people to, to come and, and join and, and and participate and you know i don't want anyone to think that they can't do it because they're too scared to do it for any sort of reason so i'm happy to to talk to anybody or answer any questions that anyone has you know about casco or swim run in general for that matter you're Love a it. gentleman and a scholar <laughs> thank you so much john thank you guys well, once again, John did not disappoint. He's great. Great wisdom there. And like he said, us, the Low Tide Boys, Chris and Chip, we're more than happy to help you along with your swim run journey. John and any other swim runners we know are more than happy to talk yeah, to you about Yeah, we don't have anyone running. who's not willing to help you. <laughs> so if you have questions, uh, <laughs> feel free to, to get into our DM. Shoot us an email, lowtideboys at gmail.com or reach out to Coach uh, John 
uh, over at Odyssey Swim Run. Yeah. So let's get into some final thoughts here. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, I mean, I would say, hey, we're super firm believers that the best way for people to get hooked on Swim Run is to go out there and do one and experience it. Casco Bay is one of the original Swim Run events in the U.S. It's also one of our favorites. So whether you're a hardcore triathlon, you know, a triathlete in triathlon training mode or more of sort of a casual endurance athlete, participating in Swim Run is a great way to use your training and or try something different and challenge yourself in a safe and supportive environment with I shit you not, the coolest people. Definitely. The nicest people out there. They're only fun to be had. Yeah. Now, there's a few different options. If you're registered or not for Casco Bay, there is the sort of traditional method, which is a partner. So Chris and I, were actually swim run partners. So we're tied together with the tether that you probably have heard about. And we do the entire race within three meters of each other. And that is a amazing way to do it. And we have many episodes... <laughs> talking about why that's great. We'll link all those in the show notes. But we do understand too, Odyssey does offer a solo division. And this might be really great if you kind of don't want to quote unquote go through the hassle of finding somebody who swims sort of your pace or runs sort of your pace and you just want to get out there and experience for yourself. You'll still have a blast. But we, you know, we would encourage the partner thing. Yeah, yeah, we, I, yeah. I think I think everyone pretty knows that knows that about us at this point. It's like, hey, the original version of this sport was as a team. We think that's sort of the the purest way to do it. Solo divisions are great to get people into the sport, but you know, if you want to do it as a partner, let us know. Let Odyssey know. There's a lot of Facebook groups, as we mentioned in the interview, that you can reach out to and. We'll do our best to try to help you find a partner. Yes. And one final thing. If you have not registered yet and you're like, wow, I'm on the couch. I'm already off the couch because I'm getting, I'm listening to what Coach John said. I've already started swimming and running more. Great. We have a discount code for you. Save 15% off your registration. Use the code Low Tide Boys. That's boys with a Z. And that will save you 15% off Casco Bay and any other Odyssey swim run races because we know you're going to get hooked. And we'll yeah. see you later on this year at other Odyssey races. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, we don't want to say we guarantee it. And we've drank the Kool Aid at this point that we're like, the, we're like the, oh, yeah. You're like busting through <laughs> the walls. Big Kool-Aid on people, guy. The Kool Aid guy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we think it's great. And we think, hey, if you're looking for something to get off the, the rat race of triathlon, you want to try, get an adventure, do something fun with some friends, check out Casco Bay. It's going to be so much fun this year. Done. Sales pitch over. (laughs) Well, that's it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a review since that's the best way to help other people discover the show and the sport of Swim Run. Sign up for our newsletter at lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z. And check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any suggestions for the show or questions for us, send us a DM or an email at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Riding Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of all our swim run activities, podcast, and other stuff. Yeah, other stuff. Other way stuff. To, way to keep it PG. Finally, you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. Go for a run. Then another swim. Then another run. And then another swim. And then another run. And then just keep going. Until you're done. Until you're done. Or maybe can't stop. stop. stuff. <laughs>